What's going on, people? It's your boy Tone back with another video. Today we are checking out Thomas Soul um, on the current black culture. Very interesting topic. Uh, it's my first time uh, uh, actually watching him and, and seeing what he has to say. So let's see how this turns out. Let's go. When I grew up in Harlem in the 40s and 50s, I never heard a gunshot. Well, let me read what you say in your preface. Um, you say, let me stay here. And now that these essays do that these essays do not mean, one, all Southern whites were or are rednecks, two, all black Americans today or in the past were or are black rednecks. One cannot predict, you write, much less forestall all the clever misinterpretations that others might put on one's words. The most that can be done is to alert honest people to the problem. Black rednecks, who are they? These would be blacks who came out of the Southern culture and who who carried that culture with them uh, north into the, into the urban ghettos and into the ghettos of the South, for that matter, uh, and who have not moved out of that culture since. Over the, over the years, both blacks and whites have moved away from that culture. But in the poorest and worst of the ghetto areas, there are lots of people who have not. And these kinds of, it's a, it's a culture which, which didn't do whites any good, and it's certainly not doing blacks any good today. And the tragedy is that people regard this culture as somehow the authentic black culture, and therefore you're not to interfere with it. I'm proud to be a bartender. <coughs> Ain't nothing wrong with that. I don't feel no ways tired. Mm. I, come I remember that. From where I started that was from. so bad. Black English is considered not quite proper English. On the other hand, if blacks happen to... And whether you go on the left or the right side, the pandering to the black crowd is it, just it's super cringe, you know what I mean? So I remember that moment. I was like, man, that, that just that's a little too far. But let's, uh, let's keep it going. All the power and uh, own all the corporations and whites were working for them. It would be the other way around. There was a period, I'm trying to remember now, I believe it was in the mid-70s mm. when uh, substandard English began to become a, a, yes. a, 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 began to become viewed as a discipline of its own within linguistic oh, yes. studies and so forth. And for all I know, it was all perfectly legitimate that certain speech patterns would be traced back to various regions in Africa and so forth. And this is, this is a language of its own. It has its own validity. But the argument, your argument would be, I don't really care what its validity is. It's holding people back. It's, yes. it's mm -hmm. preventing them per from participating in the wider society. Is that right? Ab absolutely. And also, none of these things went back to Africa. Oh, is that so? No. You, you can, yes, they did not go back to Africa. Mm -hmm. uh, if you look at uh, the peace, for example, using the word ax for ask and stuff like that, uh, all of that goes back to the South. And, the, and, and it goes back to the parts of Britain from which white Southerners came. So if you trace the call, calling uh, hog entrails chitlins, mm -hmm. uh, that was that 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 was in a certain section of Britain, the section from which whites moved into the South, and the and they were known as uh, rednecks and crackers in Britain in centuries past before they ever set foot in the South. Mm. Uh, so it, it, the whole thing is as phony as the three dollar bill. In intellectuals and race, you cite wow. an observation by the intelligence expert, IQ scientist James Flynn, that just stopped me cold. Mm. After the Second World War, you've got large numbers of, of American troops remaining in Germany. For that matter, there's still several tens of thousands there today. And both black and white American soldiers had children with German women. Mm. And Flynn discovered that those children growing up in Germany mm. showed no IQ differences at all. Mm. Mm. The, the, the black kids and the white kids, the same. So for this to be my first time listening to Thomas Sowell, it seems like he knows what he's talking about. It seems like he's done the studies, and I'm very interested is to see where all this goes. Let's go. The, the, the black kids and the white kids, the same. Professor Flynn concluded that the reason was that the offspring of black soldiers in Germany grew up in a nation with no black subculture, yeah. close quote. Which means what? Which means they experienced exactly the same expectations? Is this the... They no, no, no. The expectations are external. The culture in which they grew up was, was, was not the culture in which black kids grew up in America today. So they had... There's no gangster rap. 
in Ger uh, 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 that, that, that was pervasively uh, uh, available in Germany. So here's what I'm getting. There is something about black subculture in America today mm. that holds African Americans themselves back? Yes, <laughs> because that very sub same subculture held white whites in the South back as well. That in the time, this, this uh, mental testing in the First World War turned up, among other things, the fact that uh, whites from various oh, four or five southern states scored lower on the mental test than, than blacks from four or five northern states. And so it really was a question of the subculture that was there, which was a handicap to both. Mm. Interesting. All right. I could go on for days about the social degeneration, but let me give you just one quick example. When I grew up in Harlem in the 40s and 50s, I never heard a gunshot. Now, I'm sure someone fired a gun somewhere in Harlem, but it was not such a pervasive thing that you had to hear it. You know, uh, I have relatives in Washington. I asked them the same question, people in my generation. Growing up in did, Washington, D.C. Yes, and, and low-income uh, black neighborhoods. Did you ever hear a gunshot when you were growing up? And the answer was no. Mm. I have relatives in North Carolina. I asked the same question, no. And now, uh, you know, people in housing projects especially, they put kids, some of them, in, uh, to bed in bathtubs so that they won't be hit by stray bullets in the night. Uh, now we take it for granted that there's crimes, uh, tremendous levels of crime and violence uh, in the black community. That was not always the case. In the 20s, mm. it was very common for white celebrities, including George Gershwin and William Faulkner, to go up to Harlem not only for entertainment places, but to go into private homes of kid, people they knew. Uh, and Gershwin would play Rhapsody in Blue in, 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 in this, this home where, where Walter White lived. Uh, Milton Friedman, when he was a graduate student at, at Columbia, he and the lady he later married would go dancing at the Savoy Ballroom in Harlem. And he said, we had no fear of being uh, mugged or accosted on the street or anything like that. Uh, you've told, I've heard you say, Tom, when you were a boy growing up in Harlem yourself, mm -hmm. th th your own neighbor. This is like a very interesting take. Um, I kind of want to know more about him, to be honest, um, and why we, why we weren't made aware of him beforehand. You know what I mean? Because it seems like he has very valid points so far. I mean, so far from what we're hearing. Um, Let's just see what's going on. Come on. It felt totally safe to you. Not, not totally safe to you. I, I wouldn't exaggerate, but it's nothing resembling today. I mean, I did sleep on hot, hot nights. I would sleep out on the fire escape. Mm. When I tell people in Harlem that today, they, they think I'm, I'm, I'm from another galaxy, you know. But that people slept in, in, uh, on the fire escapes uh, in New York and in the public parks in the 30s all over the city because, because it was not like, it was not a jungle. And you could run through a great number of other things. Uh, children raised without, without two parents present. That was about 22% in 1960. One generation later, it was 67%. And it's gone up a little since then as well. And, some, and, the, and now the rate among whites is higher than it was among blacks in 1960. Right. right. Mm. I take responsibility. I take responsibility. I take responsibility. Black people are being slaughtered in the streets, killed in their own homes. These are our brothers and sisters, our friends, our family. We are done watching them die. How do you define a white liberal? Those kinds of people who have the kinds of attitudes that are called liberal in the United States, although the word is misused, those people have created an atmosphere in which um, these counterproductive cultures are to be celebrated, perpetuated, uh, and the consequences overlooked. It reminds me of a scene in the Blue Max where this general is encouraging this daredevil pilot to do all kinds of wild stunts, you see, knowing that the guy's going to kill himself if he keeps doing this, and therefore mm -hmm. the general will be rid of a, uh, of a political problem. Uh, now, I don't think that the, the white liberals are, are doing this deliberately, but I think the net results are the same. They are cheering blacks on and doing things that are absolutely self-destructive. Mm. One of the things I discovered in the research for my, for my book I'm currently working on is that leaders of groups that are lagging in countries around the world uh, almost invariably have counterproductive policies for them. And it makes perfect sense because insofar as members of lagging groups 
assimilate into the values and uh, achievements of the larger society, uh, they don't need those leaders. I mean, there's no, there's no mystery to me as to why Jesse Jackson says what he does, or Al Sharpton and others, because that benefits them, but it does not benefit the people they lead. And all the incentives are for, are for leaders to lead people uh, into things that, that don't help the people, but help the leaders. What, you'd, mm. you'd, you'd create an, there would be an exception for Dr. King, though, wouldn't there? Yes. But he, he, one of the things he was he, different because he, tried, he was earliest, or what, why? What's different about it? Well, it's, it's like insurgent movements in general. Uh, when an insurgency starts off, by definition, it, it, it has an uphill battle. Now, as the, and you can look at the history of Christianity, for heaven's sake. Uh, if, if you're going to be a Christian in the, in, in the Roman Empire, you know, in, in, uh, before the first, uh, in the first century, you had, you had a lot of grief to go through. Mm. Now, but after Christianity becomes the official religion of the Roman Empire, this is a bonanza. And there's a lot to be done. And so now you will follow policies that are the opposite of what you advocated. You will see, see that with all kinds of other uh, uh, insurgent movements. Somewhere, watching this interview, there's a young Thomas Sowell. There's an African-American who's smart and wants to do something with his life. What's, it se seems to me I've al we've already got one piece of advice you'd offer to him is stay away from the, from the races industry. Stay away from the what, race what hustlers. Ad what advi at race hustlers. What advice would you give a young Thomas Sowell? How do you make something of yourself as an African-American in America today? the way anybody else would. Mm. You equip yourself with skills that people are willing to pay for. That's it. Inter so my, from what I'm getting from Thomas Sowell, I'm not sure because when I looked them up, there were different views on him. Some were really bad, like terrible. And some were saying, you know, he's a good guy, uh, good views, very intelligent. And to be honest, off the clips from right here, I'm getting the fact that he knows what he's talking about. And like, I'm not sure where all the hate come from, hate comes from. Maybe he said something previously that, you know, got him banished from society. Cause there's not too many clips of him. Um, if you search him on, on YouTube or whatever, have you. So very interesting take, um, or takes very interesting person. Um, I kinda want to hear more of it. So, if you guys have any more clips you want me to check out, or if I find any myself, um, be sure to stick with us. Uh, make sure you guys click like, subscribe to this content, and we are going to learn more and do more, man. Let's let's get into it. So without further ado, you guys have a good day, good night, wherever you're at, and until next time, peace.